Heart of Glass, and all his other books. Do you need a laser pointer? No, I don't. Okay. Well, sh shall I sing uh, something from The Pretenders? or uh, oh, Whatever no. you want, man. <laughs> Lady Gaga. I don't know Lady Gaga. Uh, what I'm going to uh, give you is a real brief preview of what will eventually become a museum exhibit, uh, documenting the transition from in boat building from wood to fiberglass, 1940 to 1970. Uh, the uh, Dutch edition, as Marnik says, will be retitled Metal to Glass. Uh, this, this all uh, is a result of uh, an idea from Paul Herzan, who is the chairman of the board of directors of the National Design Museum, Copper Cooper Union in New York City, who happens to really admire uh, 1950s, 1960s era powerboat designs. And uh, I wrote a book called History of uh, Heart of Glass, uh, History of Fiberglass Boat Building. And uh, he uh, contacted me some years ago and said, we ought to start collecting drawings and designs from these people and exhibit them somehow. And uh, so this whole idea is sort of morphing along and involving uh, Mariner's Museum, Mystic Seaport, MIT Museum, and Professional Boat Builder Magazine. So. Uh, we will start off real quickly here with the next slide. Uh, a guy named uh, Jack Wills and Ralph Roberts, who was an auto designer in Southern California during World War II, uh, were, you've, uh, developed a process with ethyl cellulose resin and Osnaberg cotton to make some military parts, including jet assist takeoff devices uh, and this sea dome lighting buoy. Uh, that mark, they, they could anchor in the water and uh, to uh, provide kind of a runway for uh, seaplanes landing. Right after the war, uh, Wills and Roberts formed a company called Wilro to capitalize on their invention and build uh, some really lousy boats like this uh, <laughs> dinghy based on the Sea Dome lighting buoy. Uh, Jack Wills actually was a chemist, and he was the one who perfected really uh, a reliably uh, a reliable polyester resin that would cure at room temperature, which really revolutionized the industry because it allowed everybody. This floating head here uh, is Ray Green. Uh, there's something wrong with the slide, but I won't get into that. He was in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, he built his first boat at 12. His father was disappointed in it, threw it out undeterred. Uh, he built snipes to work his way through Ohio State University. Uh, he was... Uh, uh, able to come across some, obtain some of the first glass from Owens Corning, some resin from uh, American Cyanamid, and built the first polyester fiberglass boat in 1942. Uh, here these two guys are uh, laying out some uh, over a male mold for a Rebel 17-foot sailboat that he built. This is one of the dinghies he built. He uh, uh, had a, uh, he had to cure them in a, he didn't have Robert's resin at that time, of course. He had to build a little oven that uh, heat the, uh, heat everything up to about 300 degrees for two hours to get everything to kick. Taylor Winter in Trenton, New Jersey, uh, probably uh, built the first uh, series produced fiberglass boats uh, starting around 1945, uh, his plastic craft division. Uh, in the next slide, we're going to see the 28-foot personnel carrier that was probably the first fiberglass built for the uh, boat built for the U.S. Navy. Uh, they were built in aluminum cavity molds, folded over wooden plugs, and hammered to shape. Uh, in our next slide, we're going to meet German immigrant Curtis Heberts, uh, <laughs> born in 1885, uh, moved to Los Angeles. Uh, began building fiberglass boats, uh, plastic boats, uh, with muslin, spun glass, glass mat, and sisal as reinforcements. To demonstrate their toughness, uh, he undertook a series of uh, tests to hit the boats with sledgehammers. He uh, also drove over them with cars. And uh, he shot bullets at them, as we will <laughs> see momentarily here. There we go, see, point blank. See how tough this is. Uh, we're going to see a little more destructive testing in a minute. Uh, Brant Goldsworthy, uh, 
the inventor of pultrusion, uh, another Southern California guy. Uh, that same year, 1946, uh, built a totally composite automobile for the Convair Aircraft Company, uh, which thought that pilots returning from World War II might like to combine flying with the family auto vacations. <laughs> the plane uh, with attached with the, the car plane with the car attached to its underbelly managed to get off the ground, but the concept did not. Carl Beadle of Massachusetts uh, came from a long line of wooden boat builders. He built boats for the Navy during World War II. In 1946, he ventured into plastics, uh, contracting with General Electric to help build a line of molded boats with fiberglass uh, mat and laminac resin, uh, which was developed by John Wills mentioned earlier. Uh, Carl Beadle, uh, like Herberts on the West Coast, had to overcome a lot of public skepticism, uh, going to similar lengths to prove the superiority of his new material. Uh, I think he was claimed to have uttered, try this with your wooden boat, sucker. Uh, Beadle died in 1952, financially exhausted and embittered. This is Palmer Scott, uh, another Massachusetts builder, made the conversion from uh, wood to fiberglass. Um, he built uh, the wooden moppy that Dick Bertram won the famous 1960 to uh, NASA to I mean Miami to NASA race that uh, really launched the deep V constant dead dry hull form. 1939, Les Goodwin of Cape Cod Shipbuilding uh, purchased the rights to manufacture all of the small boat designs owned by the Harrishoff Manufacturing Company, including the Bullseye, Fish Class, and S Class, and then beginning in 1949, converted them to fiberglass. Here he is showing his first fiberglass boat, uh, demonstrating its unsinkability, the nine-foot MK dinghy. For flotation, he tabbed the seats to the hull to create airtight buoyancy chambers. And the first fiberglass auxiliary sailboat, I, I know all these little distinctions, I spent 11 years trying to figure them all out, was Ariane, launched in 1951 in Warren, Rhode Island by the Anchorage, designed by Sidney Hirschhoff. It's a double ender, light, somewhat tender, fast in the right conditions. Disappeared for years and years. Uh, boat builder Damian McLaughlin on the Cape found her uh, deteriorating in a field. Bought her, refurbished her, and she is for sale today and ready to go. And uh, da, 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 da. back to early deep Vs. Not this boat, but uh, coming up is Hunter, again built by the Anchorage in Warren, Rhode Island. Uh, after Palmer Scott, of course, built uh, Moppy, as we talked about, then uh, uh, the Anchorage built four deep V constant dead rise boats to Ray Hunt designs, this being one of them, which inspired Dick Bertram to get Moppy. So the fiberglass actually came before the wood. And last shot, Bill Tritt, uh, a really uh, innovative builder in California, uh, did a lot of cool things. His company, Glassbar, was the largest builder of fiberglass boats in the world for a long time. And uh, many, many years before Gary Hoyt popularized the unstayed catcatch rig, Bill Tritt with fiberglass spars, Bill Tritt built this spar in 1947. And uh, just died a few years ago, uh, a really great guy. And on our last slide, I think we have our website up here. We're really trying to encourage uh, participation in this website and this virtual exhibit, which will become a museum exhibit at some point. We want to hear stories, want to get photographs from people who know people or, or remember people that were instrumental in uh, this business. So thank you very much. Awesome, Dano, but you didn't get the um, honorary handshake. I, I feel somehow left like a girl without a dance partner. I'll give you a hug later. Um, if you want to see a little bit more about the beginning of the plans of wood to glass, it's a professional boat builder's booth at number 1705. And I heartily recommend Dan's book, uh, Heart, Heart of Glass, available on Amazon or McGraw-Hill, I suppose.
our next member has a our next presenter has a tough job because some of the people he's worked with sorry about that some of the people he's worked with over the years are in the audience 